guys and welcome to my review of Hiroaka chapter 239 successor it's been a while since I've done a review of anything or made a video so um, bear with me for a while while I refigure out how to do this um, but hopefully I'll be getting into making videos again and um, yeah I really wanted to talk about my hero so here we are um, yeah um, I'll probably get into doing one piece next week um, but for now I'll start with Hiraka because it's a little easier for me to talk about um, and I really want to talk about this chapter so yeah uh, we can start with what happened in the beginning of the chapter where we see we see Spinner we see Twice and Giran we all see them all beat up and kind of like trying to figure out what's happening and um, in Giran and Twice case they're running away from everything because Giran is their agent and of course they came here to rescue him in the uh, to begin with, so he's obviously one of their number one priorities. Um, but we, we don't spend too much time with him because obviously the big thing is the battle between Shigaraki and Redestro and it finally reaching its climax in the most spectacular way. Um, we have a couple of shots of Redestro kind of trying to figure out how Shigaraki's powers work and how, his, how far his range is and kind of like trying some last minute things to an attempt to battle him when his power is just seemingly growing throughout the fight, which is just amazing and crazy. Um, and we just have these amazing shots of just everything falling to Shigaraki's powers. Like, it's... The whole city is just destroyed, which is so far from what he could do prior to this art, where it was just like, what he touches destroy is destroyed, and now it's like, the decay is just spreading throughout this entire city. Um, it's it's crazy there's that one panel where you have like the whole like everything around them is just getting destroyed and you have a small shigaraki in the middle just laughing like a maniac because he's really like going crazy and yet i'm still sitting here rooting for him like at no point in this arc did i say yes i really want the meta liberation army to to win this because even though i think they're probably like their ambitions make more sense and and what they want to change society kind of makes more sense because Shigaraki is kind of all about destroying. Um, I still end up rooting for League of Villains just because, like, obviously we spend more time with them and we're more attached to their characters. And then obviously seeing, like, a lot of the backgrounds for them in this arc has really helped just, like, um, make them more, not necessarily likable, but just you, you gain some sort of affection for them or you just kind of want to root for them. I mean, when it's villain against villain, you kind of want to root for the main villain, so. And I just think this arc has been really well done, but I'm going to make an art review, hopefully. <laughs> I said this about other things, but hopefully I'm going to make an art review of this entire arc, because I really, really enjoyed it. Even though I do miss the main characters, I really enjoyed this arc too. We also have a panel where we see Gantamachi kind of like coming in and watching um, Shigaraki fight, which I thought was really good. I'm going to talk a little bit about Gantamachi by the end here, but I really love how he just comes in and just sees Shigaraki and has this like look of surprise in his face because he's never really looked at Shigaraki as anything other than a fake success or anything like that. And obviously that's where the title name comes into place. And then we kind of like cut to the end of the fight and we have Redesto who unfortunately couldn't escape all of Shigaraki's decay and had to cut off his feet to keep his entire body from decaying. Which is kind of interesting as we had like in uh, the overhaul arc we had uh, Shigaraki like touch his arm and then cut it off so it wouldn't decay his whole being because he obviously wanted him to suffer for because um, he didn't like him and like he, he'd already taken away his quirk and everything so I, I quite like that at this point in time Shigaraki is just stripping away limbs from his enemies um, obviously for this fight it ends much much differently because he parts with overhaul as being like okay I have humiliated you he's not necessarily the the person who defeated him because that kind of goes to Deku but his enemies don't really uh get out of this as they want to and I really like this um it also just makes me fear Shigaraki in the future because he has now this history of just like taking people's limbs <laughs> and not fully killing them even though they they would have died had they not like it had Shigaraki or themselves not cut off that limb that was decaying so that's I think that's a really interesting touch. We also have as Shigaraki is walking towards Redresto, uh, kind of talking to him, we have that shot where his arm is looking completely messed up and it really makes me think of Deku, especially in the beginning when he was going 
uh, 100% in uh, using one for all, where he would just mess up his entire body. The way that Shigaraki's arm is drawn is very similar to that, which I really like, because throughout this art, we've had a lot of comparisons between Shigaraki and Deku, and basically how environments and um, heroes who help you and stuff like that, they really change your uh, your life and, you know, the paths that you're set on, because, you know, they're, even though their childhoods are extremely uh, different. Like, I don't want to call them similar. They still ended up on very different paths, even though had someone been there to save Shigaraki, obviously he might have ended up on a different path. You can also take his story as a comparison to Todoroki's, who obviously had um, an abusive father too, and uh, just a very um, non unhealthy home life. Um, and he still ended up on the path of a hero, even though he was obviously still healing from all the abuse and like everything that's happened in his past, whereas Shigaraki was just taken by the, uh, by the hand of someone who was as evil as All for One and just like went straight down that path of darkness. But then we have Regestro, uh, when all his comrades come in, they're like, Supreme Leader, no, we should, we should help him and like, all that. He's like, he admits defeat instantly. Like he knows at this point there's no stopping Shigaraki, they can't win and he isn't uh he isn't a main a, a crazy enough person to just like sacrifice everything because even if he's willing to let down his life for his ideals and for Destro's ideals and everything that doesn't mean he should uh give away the lives of his comrades and everything everyone who support this cause so far so he admits defeat and he gives Shigaraki the meta liberation army which is crazy and i love this entire like speech we have of like shigaraki really coming into his own as a leader and being the symbol of not hope but like something that will change society and someone who will destroy the society that they that they have so that something new can be built on it and obviously from our eyes this is a completely crazy situation because shigaraki is literally all about destroying like i going back to the conversation he had with toga where, where it was like what do you really want? And Shigaraki literally just says, I want to destroy everyone except my friends. Um, with the friends, he means <laughs> obviously the League of Villains. Uh, so that's obviously completely crazy. And giving him the Metal Liberation Army, who have like, they have tons of money, influence, like they own the, or they have a company th where they make hero gear and stuff like that. That There's so much that Shigaraki gets out of this. But I love that the first thought he has when he's given the Meta Liberation Army is going back to his conversation with Compress, who wanted to like, you know, eat sushi. <laughs> um, and I just love that little like tidbit because I, I love that little panel of Shigaraki and the light bulb where he's like, you got a lot of money, right? That'd be great. Let's go out and eat. <laughs> um, I just, because it really shows that even though Shigaraki's like, He's really all about the dest this destroying thing. Like, the whole chapter is just him, like, la laying waste to this entire town. He still thinks about his comrades, and he's still, like, looking out for them and remembering things they told him, like, a month ago. Um, and I just really like that, because having this form of camaraderie within the League of Villains is something that has been missing a lot, because a lot of them have had various different goals. Like, some of them are literally just there because it's a way for them to commit crimes, like Toka, she just wants to suck blood. Uh, and the League of Villains gives her that opportunity. You have someone like uh, Spinner who's there because he thought that uh, the League kind of supported the views of Stain, even though they hate him. And you had someone like Magna who just wanted to be herself and obviously also was a criminal. And that was somewhere she could find ex acceptance. And you have like all these different people who who really just they had so many different goals, and now they can finally unite under. Uh, Shigaraki. The only exception to this is the person that we didn't see in this uh, chapter, which is Dabi. Because obviously we have all this, this Dabi stuff with oh, he's probably a Todoroki, he's probably a Toya and all those things. So there's probably still like some disconnect between Dabi and Shigaraki. However, I think eventually when we get into more of Dabi's backstory and hopefully we get that reveal that he, he is a Todoroki or we'll all like fall on our heads when he isn't. Um, like we will see him more and we'll see him more like come in not into his own, but, like, he'll become more, hmm, relevant character and just, you know, be part of this group and, like, really view Shigaraki as a leader. Because he, he seems to be, like, there, but he has his own goals and things. Like, he's, he really seems like the most likely person to just straight up leave if he wants to do something else. Because um, that seems to be the life he's kind of had since he left Todoroki, <laughs> the Todoroki family, <laughs> if that's what he did. That he's just, like, jumped around doing whatever he wants. Um, but, yeah. 
uh, going back to Gigant Tomachi, I really, really love that we have him, like, just standing there also realizing Shigaraki's leader, because the whole time we've had this arc, like, from the beginning where they were battling with him, trying to gain his respect, trying to beat him so that they could gain his respect, so that Shigaraki could prove that he is the new, like, big thing, and the rightful successor of All for One, and then you have this arc where it says, okay, Gigante Machia must, must be the trump card to this. He's gonna come in and, like, kind of save the day. Because, like, even though he hates Shigaraki, he's probably gonna, like, destroy anything in his path. And then by the end, when he finally does come in, he has to do absolutely nothing because Shigaraki took care of it. And I love that so much because, again, as I said, I thought he was gonna be the trump card this whole time. And even the League of Villains were like, this is our trump card right here. He's so strong, we couldn't beat him no matter how long we fought him. Um, and he doesn't do anything except... He accepts Shigaraki as a leader and ex as a successor. And I just, I really, really love that. It's such a good way to show that this was Shigaraki's arc. This was him becoming the main bad villain. Because he's been obviously been that the whole time. But there's always been the overarching th threat, threat of All for One. But All for One was All Might's opponent. He was All Might's villain to fight. And even though... I'm, I fully support the idea that they are going to break all for one out because he probably he needs to give Shigaraki the quirk uh, so he can like really become the next him. Shigaraki is the next, next big thing and Shigaraki is going to be the one who will battle Deku in the end. Or in my theory, Deku and Bakugo because like, you know, wonder duo. Uh, but I made another video about that at some point. <laughs> um, it's like a year-ish back, <laughs> maybe more. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really loved having this arc. And I think, I'm not entirely sure, I'm, at the very least, this is the second to last chapter of this arc. Um, but we could have, because there are two different ways that we could go next chapter. Either we just jump straight back to the main story, we follow Deku again, and that's fine. Because a lot of people have complained about this arc being, like, you know, villain fatigue. We need to see the main characters, because, like, we all care more about the main characters than the villains. Um, and even as a person who loved this arc to bits, I also miss Deku and I miss Bakugo and I miss all the other characters, but mainly Deku and Bakugo. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> what I was saying was basically we could jump into that story or we could have another wrap up chapter next week, just focusing on what happens now, what they're going to do with these new things and maybe like Shigaraki hashing out like how this is going to work now that he has the Meta, Li Meta Liberation Army under his, uh, control and maybe we're gonna go back to Dobby and see how everything racked up over there. I, don't, I think he's still fighting the ice person. Um, so yeah, uh, but the, I think the benefits of jumping straight into the hero side of the story is not only that we all get what we want, but also that we have absolutely no idea what's gonna go on with Shigaraki now. We just know that he's gotten all of these things and that he has so many opportunities now because they were living in like this shaggy ass house i don't even want to know it's like a shed <laughs> they were living in the worst place ever and it was like they had no money they had nothing at all and now suddenly they have everything and the meta liberation army is scary because there are a lot of ordinary people who have like their own lives and influence in the world and no one really knows that they're this villainous army so they can still go like undercover and just blend into society and no one knows they're with the League of Villains and that's really really scary because they can have influence on other people and like slowly start spreading this message that the League of Villains want to wants to get out there and it's just a really really scary prospect because at some point you're gonna have society completely flipped on the heroes um which is important I think I also made a video about how I think society is gonna change in Pokemon Hero um, I keep calling this series different things, like, I just in this video I called it My Hero Hero Akon Boku no Hero, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really think it's, it's gonna be so interesting to see this, because another thing about Shigaraki is he kind of wavers a little bit between being really smart and sometimes being a little bit dumb, because he tends to get his, um, he lets his emotions get the better of him, which I really, really like. Because uh, as much as I like a smart opponent, I think it would be really scary if Shigaraki was smart all the time. Um... And he's also quite selfish uh, sometimes. Like, sometimes he has a goal and he just goes straight after that goal without really paying attention to much else, like when he wants to kill All Might. There are probably, like, better ways to go about it than the way he tried to. Um, but he just, like, goes completely for that and then, like, to the wind with everything else. 
Uh, I don't think that's the same, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it would be really scary to not have another chapter of this arc, just because then we won't know how Shigaraki's gonna handle this new power that he has. Um, but on the other hand, it would also be nice to have like... Not that I don't think this was a proper ending, this would, be, this would, this would still be a really great place to end this arc, but to have, you know, a, a, a little scene afterwards where they're using the money to like get a new apartment, not apartment, they could buy like a whole building, uh, get their sushi and just like be like, okay, this is where we go for an hour. So we kind of have an idea of where their plan is going. So we kind of know what the threat is going to be and what to be scared of. But on the other hand, also not knowing that means that we have no idea when or where Shigaraki is going to strike next. So, you know, it's up in the air. And I think both options are really good depending on what Hori decides to do with it. Um, so yeah, uh, but it really, this arc is coming to an end if it hasn't already. Um, and I thought this arc was really good. I'm once again, I'm probably gonna make like a little review of it. I really want to talk about. It. I've been missing talking about my hero especially, um, because it's been really, really good lately, and I've been super obsessed with it. It's I've been rereading the manga so many times, and I've just. <sighs> and I think one of the reasons I've been really obsessed with it lately is because we're in this League of Villain Villain arc, so we've not only gotten more insight into the villains that are gonna be the big bads at the end, but also because. Because I'm missing the main character so much, I've been going back and rereading chapters with them just to, to get my little fix every week. So yeah, I, I'm really obsessed with this series at the moment. It's, it, yeah, I love it a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, this got longer than I thought it would. I was going to try to keep it under 10 minutes, but let's see um, how I do in the future with that. But there was a lot to wrap up because it was the end of an arc, somewhat, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to try my best to keep putting out videos because I have missed doing this. Um, I just not had the time or the mental capacity to do this because so much has been going on. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try my best and you can like this video if you like anything that I have to say. Leave in the comments below what you thought of this chapter and or this arc and you can subscribe to hopefully see more videos of me talking about my hero One Piece, maybe some figure skating later because the season is gonna start in a couple of days. Um, and other things that I might talk about. I have some ideas for some videos that I just need to write and then film. And then we can see what happens with this channel. Hopefully, I'll, I'm, I'm going to stay active from now on. Um, but yeah, until next time. Bye.